Hi everyone, I'm Jess and you are watching Discern with Jim Dennison. Today is Friday, November 19th. Hi Jim. Hi Jess, how are you today? I am doing well, excited for the weekend and Thanksgiving and all the yeah. things. How are you doing? Doing well, all, all, of the, all that you said, all of the above. Yes. Well, today we are going to be talking about the Kyle Rittenhouse trial that has been going on recently. And in your daily article, you referenced an Andrew Sullivan newsletter um, that makes some compelling points about how that story has been reported. And so that's where we're going to that's what we're going to talk about today. And so this is from your daily article. Andrew Sullivan is a British American writer, editor, and blogger. He has written for the New, the New Republic, Time, The Atlantic, The Daily Beast, New York, and other publications. Andrew recently wrote a newsletter titled When All the Media Narratives Collapse, which lists example after example of ways the mainstream media have gotten significant recent stories wrong in significant and often indefensible ways. For example, he links to a New York Times article published the morning after the killing for which Kyle Rittenhouse has been on trial this week. Neither the article nor a subsequent reporting by the New York Times included the possibility that Rittenhouse may have shot assailants in self-defense. Thus, when one of his pursuers admitted on the witness stand that Rittenhouse shot him only after the man pointed his gun directly at Rittenhouse's head a few feet away, people were shocked. According to Sullivan, the New York Times coverage and videos of the event omitted key elements that only came to light during the trial this week. Sullivan concludes, I still rely on the mainstream media for so much. I still read the New York Times first thing in the morning. I don't want to feel as if everything I read is basically tilted toward wish fulfillment, narrative proving, and ideology. But with this kind of record, how can I not? So there is a lot to unpack there. Um, but first off, what did you take away from Sullivan's comments regarding mainstream media? Yeah, it's really telling that Andrew Sullivan is the one making this point because he is so well known within mainstream media. He's written on so many of the platforms, so he's not someone from the outside who's just kind of uh, throwing stones, as it were, but he's somebody that understands the business from the inside. And then when you look at his article, Jess, it's just example after example after example, 15 or 16 different stories that have been in the news in uh, recent months that have been gotten wrong by the media, sometimes in very, very obvious and perhaps even intentional ways. And so the point he's making is that there's such enormous bias in media today that it makes it very difficult to know what to trust and what not to trust. Now, the examples that he cites, the mainstream media that he cites, all would tend toward the left, you would think, ideologically. You could find examples to the right as well. That's not the point here. We're not here to discuss which ideological agenda is right, but rather to say that media is itself driven by ideology today in a way that hasn't been the case in the past. And knowing that's a really important first step in knowing how then to consume the media, how to interpret what we see in a way that perhaps is more objective and perhaps is more helpful and more redemptive. Yeah, that's an interesting note that this is someone from within this industry who is pointing out these things, which I think makes it even more shocking and even more credible for sure. So I want to ask you, how can we be more prepared to discern biases or agendas in what we hear or read? That's a great question. Very practical question. Absolutely. The first thing is what we're doing already, and that is to admit, to understand that all news is written from an agenda. It's written from a perspective. Now, the reason for that has to do with the way the news business works. At the end of the day, as you know, news business is a business. It's there to make money. It needs to make money in order uh, to move forward. No margin, no mission. Well, there was a day when people watched the evening news or read the newspaper or whatever it might be because they wanted objective reporting of news events. If you wanted opinion, you went to the opinion section. And so as a result, news could make money by being as objective as possible. That's how they got advertisers to advertise in the paper or on the TV show or whatever it might be. These days, it's possible through analytic means to be able to know a demographic group with greater specificity than ever before. Ford pickup trucks know what kind of demographic is likely to buy their truck as opposed to a Cadillac SUV over here or this kind of wine or that kind of beer or this kind of soft drink. They know exactly who their likely buyers are and therefore their media outlets which know how to target that specific buyer, that specific demographic, and then the advertiser buys space or clicks or whatever it might be on that particular platform as it's targeting that specific demographic. And so agendas that are driven around specific demographic groups are critical to the business model of today. The old idea of objective news is no longer 
uh, on some level tenable relative to how the business works. So the first step is literally to understand that, to understand that every uh, news uh, uh, outlet from any perspective has a particular ideology. The second is to know what the ideology of that is, which isn't that difficult to do. As we read it, as we look at it, we can pretty well tell what their place on the political spectrum might be, that sort of thing. And so we come knowing that. On a third level, therefore, I think it's vital that we look at news from a variety of different perspectives. It may be the same story, but see how Fox covers it as opposed to how CNN covers it. Look at what's over here, perhaps, at the New Republic versus over here at the Blaze or whatever it might be. Try to get a spectrum so that perhaps we can get a better sense of the absolute story in light of the various ways in which it's being reported. And then fourth, make certain that we interpret all news through the prism of Scripture, that we're looking at all that happens to us through the prism of what God's Word says, what God's Word reveals, because that's the truth that sets us free, as Jesus said. Jim, thank you so much for those practical steps. I think another thing that is helpful for me is to kind of just wait for a few days after a news story comes out, as well as, you know, reading multiple and just waiting for more information um, and just letting it sit and marinate for a good bit. Because um, I think a lot of times um, news can be really clickbaity and really emotionally charged with language that is trying to get your attention. And so I think all of these are great way, great places to start for us. Um, that's all we have for you guys today. We will see you here Monday on Discern.